found. Number 10, the missing link. According to a study posted by Cardiff University, scientists think they have finally found the missing link that foreshadows the ice age, and it's a little too real. What did they know before? Well, scientists knew that ice age cycles developed due to periodic changes in the Earth's orbit. The small variations in solar energy set off massive shifts in Earth's climate. But how remained a mystery. Well, now scientists think it has everything to do with the melting of the icebergs. Ha ha ha, well, isn't that interesting? When the Earth is in the right position and icebergs begin to melt away from Antarctica, immense volumes of fresh water move into the Atlantic Ocean away from the Southern Ocean. Therefore, the Southern Ocean gets saltier and massive changes in circulation patterns pull CO2 out of the atmosphere. We know that the less CO2 in the atmosphere, the colder the temperature will be as it reduces the greenhouse effect. Therefore, Earth moves towards ice age conditions. Now, I think we can be a little more scared of the ice caps melting. Number nine, lion cubs. Lion cubs in ice? Well, yes, yes indeed. The world is strange and wonderful and it was once covered in a lot of ice. Unian and Dina were the first cave lions to be found and another was found more recently in Yakutia, Russia. Both sets of remains date back to the ice age around 12,000 years ago. This species uncovered went extinct 10,000 years ago and these poor babies died in a really, really sad way. Either their mother died or abandoned them, and the newest cub is so well preserved that you can see how it went to sleep with its little head resting on their paw. They also found two other cave lions, Boris and Sparta, in the same area, both perfectly preserved and 18,000 years apart. These two little cubs also helped establish the appearance of cave lions without manes. But the most exciting thing about the remains is that it could be used for cloning now that we've completed the genome. Interesting. Number eight a wolf head. The wolves we have now are pretty massive, but imagine how big their ancestors must have been. Pavel Efimov was searching for mammoth tusks in Siberia, Russia, when he made an unexpected discovery. The head of an Ice Age wolf, perfectly preserved. Its hair, teeth, brain, and ears are fully intact after over, huh, can't believe this, after 40,000 years frozen in the permafrost. These massive creatures were a little over twice the size of modern day wolves and could crush bone with their jaw. Definitely not the most friendly of creatures. It would have been a full grown wolf when it died, but it wasn't killed by humans. Why was the head separated from the body then? Well, scientists believe that it died originally intact, but with the melting and shifting and cracking of the ice, probably separated them. The most exciting part is that now scientists will be able to study the evolution of the modern day wolf. Number seven, disease. I think we've talked about this on the channel before, but here we are again. In August 2016, 21 people were mysteriously infected by anthrax. This is just one terrifying discoveries that scientists have made beneath the ice. Researchers are concerned that some of the world's most deadly viruses are trapped beneath the permafrost from the ice age. And based on this event, they don't seem to be wrong. Not only are they worried about the potential resurfacing of the bubonic plague or smallpox, but something even bigger. Something we may not even have heard of yet. Due to the rapid rate of the ice melting, it is only a matter of time before we figure this out the hard way. We've survived one pandemic. Is another waiting beneath the ice one layer away from revival? I really hope not. Number six, giant animals. Considering we have started this list off talking about a lot of animals, it seems to make sense that we highlight a theme here. Ever wonder what it would be like to live in the ice age? <laughs> Me neither, except for maybe right now, because it's boiling right now. Oh, it's so hot. Never mind. It's way too hot. We're just gonna take this off. Ironically, it's way too hot in the studio today, so here we are. Why? Because everything was so much bigger and even imagining that terrifies me. Megafauna were large, oversized animals that lived around the time of the Ice Age. In fact, it was their playground. Not only was there, of course, the woolly mammoth, but massive saber-toothed tigers, short-faced bears, and of course, the above, massive dire wolves. Plus, you can almost guarantee they were always hungry with food being so scarce. I wonder if people will look back in like a thousand years from now and think about how small our animals are. But believe me, from John giant wombats that could be mistaken for bison to killer birds, not a place we would want to live. But they also had some unique survival skills. For instance, the Ice Age rhino was believed to have had a shovel horn to help remove snow. That's kind of neat. Number five, human revival. Now, considering all the technology we have today, unless we have a day after the tomorrow kind of situation, if we have another ice age, we might be okay. Might. But I am pretty optimistic because Homo sapiens were able to survive the ice age, so why not we? Despite not being hairy or thick skinned, they were resourceful and inventive, relying on traps to catch their dinner. The hunting tools they had would have been limited to stones, knives, and arrowheads. Anything more complicated would have been really, really, really rare. So instead, they used traps, and this is 
is where it would get kind of gruesome. Once their prey would fall prey to whatever traps were sent, the men would surround the injured creature and maul it to death. Hey, when you're hungry, you're hungry. And in a dog eat dog world, it's a privilege to care about how you will kill your next meal. Number four, Mammoth House. What do you do when you don't have bricks and mortar? Well, you build a house out of, um, bones that you just find lying around. Yeah. According to an article posted in 2020, Russian archaeologists found a massive circle made of the bones of Ice Age creatures. The bones are from creatures that lived over 20,000 years ago. Not only are there five dozen mammoths, but reindeer, horses, bears, wolves, red and arctic foxes. And this isn't the only circle like it. There are around 70 Ice Age bone circles in 25 sites in Ukraine and Russia. Some of the bones were still joined together, which meant that they still had meat on their bones when they were added. In the middle, there are wooden poles that were presumably used to support roofs made of animal hides. There is still speculation as to whether they were used for homes, ritual, or storage buildings, but still, a house of bones sounds odd to us, I know, but imagine having to withstand cold without the tech we have now. Ah, desperate times call for desperate measures. Number three, mini ice ages. Did you know that we may get a mini ice age before we get a really big one? Like a test run, kind of, if you will. Though they aren't as deadly, they can still cause widespread famine and disease due to failed crops. The last recorded mini ice age happened between the 12th and 14th century, peaking from 1500 to 1850. It mostly took place in the Northern hemisphere of Europe where seas would freeze repeatedly and glaciers would crush whole villages. This happened quite often in places like Switzerland. But even worse, just like in Game of Thrones, they would go whole years, whole years without summer. No thank you. No one quite knows what caused this tiny ice age, but scientists have a couple of ideas. One, that it had something to do with volcanic activity and that it had an effect on the solar energy the earth was receiving. Whatever the reason, it definitely provides yet another explanation as to why the Middle Ages were just so sad. So sad. Number two, more CO2 is a good thing? Hmm. Considering the first point on this list, we know that less CO2 in the atmosphere will lead to colder temperatures, which could mean ice ice baby. But considering the very, very real concept of global warming and the fact that we are injecting so much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, could that mean we will stave off an ice age? Well, scientists think this might be so. While we definitely need to figure out how to control our output so other problems don't arise, it could help fight off the next ice age, right? Weird. There's an upside to everything. According to Cambridge University, although the planetary cycle makes an ice age inevitable, like the seasons, the only way it can happen is if the CO2 level is too low. At this point, we have pumped so much CO2 into the air that even if it all stopped tomorrow, we would still have enough to keep an ice age at bay for at least a thousand years. However, However, if we keep going the way we're going, well, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. I'm like, what do you want? Snowball, hot earth. Depends what you like, I guess. How the heck are we gonna get out of this one, you know? And last but not least, the snowball. What's more terrifying than an ice age? A giant snowball. No, not the one that you made to throw at your neighbor. I mean the one that could be our earth. A snowball earth is a very, very terrifying possibility, though probably not as likely. A snowball earth would destroy much of life on earth and sink our entire world into a deep freeze. And it did. The Snowball Earth was a series of ice ages that occurred during the Neoproterozoic era that were so massive the entire planet froze over 500 million years ago. Why did it happen? Well, scientists from MIT speculate that it was due to a drop in heat so steep that it triggered a runaway effect. The ice expanded so quickly, the Earth didn't have time to recover. This drop in temperature might have been prompted by several volcanic eruptions that happened in quick succession. Scientists are unsure as to whether humans could make this happen, but if it did, we wouldn't be able to stop it. At the speed at which the Earth's atmosphere is changing because of us, who knows what could happen. It could go so far, it goes the other way around. You just don't know. Starting us off at number 10 is the old classic from pop culture, Aliens. While the first one isn't much of a real discovery, it is becoming much more prominent these days. If you have tuned into any of our channels or sister channels and recently watched any of those videos, I'm sure you have heard us talk about aliens at nauseum. But that's because of all the new strange UFOs UFO sightings that are now being declassified, as well as being treated with respect and dignity for the first time ever. However, there are countless ufologists that will say they believe aliens are trying to contact us to help us rather than end us. That being said, there are also countless other scientists who are out there who theorize that if we were to make contact with an intelligent extraterrestrial species, we might be in deep trouble. 
They could be here to take advantage of Earth's natural resources and could swat us away like a fly in a diner, or attempt to colonize our planet with or without our permission, or lastly, we could even destroy ourselves with the answer to, are we alone in the universe? The late physicist named Gerard O'Neill in a 1979 interview stated, Advanced Western civilization has had a destructive effect on all primitive civilizations it has come into contact with, even in those cases where every attempt was made to protect and guard the primitive civilization. I don't see any reason why the same thing would not happen to us. Ugh, I don't know man, I'm hoping that if the answer to are we alone in this universe is answered within my lifetime, I'm really hoping it doesn't go down like that. At number 9 we have one that might seem obvious, but nuclear war. Okay. Hold the phone here, there is a little bit of good news here. Limited exchanges like the terrible US bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki are fairly rare. Although bombings unfortunately do happen around the world every single day in war town countries which is very sad, but none that are nuclear in size. If nuclear war were to occur, it would most likely be a humanitarian catastrophe and harm many but not all human beings. That being said, that doesn't mean that's where the damage would stop. The possibility of nuclear winter is very possible in the aftermath of a nuclear war, and that is something to have cause for alarm. Nuclear winter could happen if enough nukes were detonated, and then the world's temperatures would decrease dramatically. After that, it would lead to disrupting food production and possibly rendering human life impossible. It's unclear how possible or how large of a nuclear war you would need to create a worldwide nuclear winter, but nevertheless, it is a possibility. But don't worry, here's a solution. I got it right here for you. <laughs> Stop destroying each other. Wow. Would you look at that? I'm a freaking genius. At number 8 we have the reversal of the Earth's magnetic field. Every few hundred thousand years or so, the Earth's magnetic field dwindles to practically nothing for almost half a century, and then reappears with the North and South Poles flipped. The last time this happened was about 780,000 years ago though, which means we might just be overdue for a complete reversal of our poles. You hear that Santa? It's uh, time to relocate buddy. What is currently alarming is that over the last century, the strength of Earth's magnetic fields has decreased by 5%. But why is this a worry in a world filled with GPS systems and people who will take you anywhere you want anyway? Well, the magnetic fields deflect particle storms and cosmic rays from the sun. Without Earth's magnetic protection, these particles could strike Earth's atmosphere and eat at an already disappearing ozone layer. So if the 5% decrease is of any concern, maybe we better keep an eye on our compasses and start joining Earth's millionaires up in space. At number 7 we have the vacuum collapse. In Kurt Vonnegut's classic book, Cat's Cradle, Vonnegut popularized the idea of Ice 9, a fictional form of water that is much more stable and is a solid at room temperature. If someone unleashed a bit of it, then all of Earth's water transformed to Ice 9 and would freeze all over Earth. In the early history of the universe based off a leading cosmological model, space was filled with energy. This state of energy was called a false vacuum and was highly precarious. A new, more stable vacuum appeared and just like Ice 9, it completely took over. This caused an incredible blast of energy which caused a runaway expansion of the cosmos. Even though it is unlikely, it is possible that an even more stable vacuum exists. As this universe expands and cools, tiny bubbles of this new vacuum could appear and spread at the speed of light. The laws of physics would change in their wake and a huge blast of energy would crash everything as we know it into tiny little space crumbs. Like I said, it is not very likely, but it is a strange discovery nonetheless. Scientists are much more worried for our number 6 spot. At number 6 we have Rho black holes. Not sure how many of you know about this, but our galaxy is filled with black holes. You know, just collapsed stellar corpses about 10 to 24 times as massive as the sun, you know those things. How many of those are there though? Well, that's a good question. It is estimated that in our very own Milky Way galaxy that there are about 10 million of these things. These cosmic wonders are cause for alarm because their gravity is so strong that they can swallow just about anything in its path. The black hole wouldn't have to come that close to Earth either to cause a massive swallowing of everything we know. Or even just passing through our solar system, these black holes could distort all of our planets its orbits and Earth could get caught in an elliptical path that would send our climate out of whack or even us spiraling into space out of our natural orbit. That sounds pretty scary to me. Also just the realization that if Earth moved out of its habitable zone, we could all be done for for good. I, I can't think about that anymore, that's, <laughs> that's gonna give me lots of nightmares. Coming in hot at our habitable 
halfway point at number five, just like the dinosaurs, we have asteroids. And I ain't talking about the video game. I'm talking about the massive space rocks hurtling through space and possibly crashing into our planet. It happened 66 million years ago, and honestly, it could happen again. Asteroids and space rocks have close calls with our planet all the time, and even small meteors and things like that hit Earth all of the time as well. Most of the time, though, they burn up in the atmosphere upon entry, as well as they fall into our oceans. However, large ones can still be out there, and luckily for us, NASA is fairly confident in its ability to track these large space rocks. Scientists have recently, back in 2018, strengthened their fight against this unlikely but catastrophic event. They have better detection services now, as well as have plans to rocket a space vehicle into space at the asteroid to change its course. <laughs> How sweet is that? However, that has not been tested yet, as well as if one were to get to a big enough size, it wouldn't really matter anyway. So for the time being, let's just keep our fingers, toes, and whatever the hell else that we can cross so that this does not happen. At number four, we have super volcanoes. Fun fact, there are some out there who actually believe that it was a super volcano explosion that killed the dinosaurs and not the large asteroid I previously talked about. But that being said, most evidence still does point to a massive asteroid, and I'm going to go with the majority of scientists on this one because that's the smart thing to do. Anyway, the Permian Triassic extinction event that rendered almost 90% of the Earth's species extinct is actually believed to have been caused by a mega eruption. Eruptions can cause significant global cooling as well as disruption to agricultural production around the world. However, one of super proportions is incredibly unlikely. That being said, there would be no way to stop it. So that's that's fun. You know, as of right now, like I said, though, it is unlikely that this will happen during the existence of humans. But like with most things, it's not the immediate impact of the event, it's the lasting effects on the environment that could render the end to all of us. Starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have AI. That's right, just like all those crazy movies have taught us growing up, many do fear our biggest downfall coming from our own electronic cyborg hands. The fear is that once these AIs become intelligent enough to teach themselves computer science, they could use that knowledge to improve themselves, creating a spiral of increasing intelligence and finally taking over everything and everyone as we know it. Even the late great Stephen Hawking warned the world against AI back in 2014. Hawking stated, it would take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever increasing rate. Yep, if Stephen Hawking said it, then you know there's something to it. So once again, you can find me in my end of the world bunker. Coming in mega hot at number two, we have climate change. That's right, this one we all known about for years and we'll have to deal with for years as well. Corals are bleaching, seas are warming, temperatures are warming, hurricanes are happening more frequently, ice is melting, forest fires are raging, the list goes on and on and on. On. Yes, we are in a major battle to save our planet from the lasting and terrible effects of climate change. And if we do not do something about it soon, in our lifetime, it will only make things worse for the next generation who may or may not see the truly horrid effects of climate change. So please, everyone, just remember, you don't need to be perfect. We all just need to do better. Fight against companies who don't take our climate crisis seriously. Educate, converse, do whatever you can. And sure enough, we will have a ripple effect of saving our planet. And just remember, it all starts with just one tiny action. And finally, coming in at our number one spot is the unknown. That's right, the scariest and strangest discoveries that could end all of humanity as we know it are the ones that haven't even been thought of or discovered yet. I don't even want to think of what else could be out there after going through this list today, but if one thing is for certain, it's that most of these we have control over and we should most definitely take control over. Like I said earlier, see what happens when we all start looking out for each other in the smallest and most unexpected places. It creates a ripple effect and leaves us just a little bit better off. Unless it's an asteroid or a super volcano. Then we're all f Number 10. Decoy spider. These decoy building spiders are exceptionally small, but they're exceptionally smart. Smart spiders? That's terrifying already. These spiders only measure to be about five millimeters in length, but you might see a much larger spider hanging out in a web that they've created. Now, this might sound alarming at first, but this larger spider is actually fake. Yeah, it's actually a decoy spider that the small spider built out of various materials, such as food, scraps, debris, and even their old skin. These spiders were only discovered pretty recently in the Amazon so not too much is known about them as there still needs to be tons of research done. All we know is that they like to make things that look like a large spider and that's terrifying enough. Maybe it's for defense purposes or maybe it's like the ancient Romans, you know? Maybe they're just statues honoring a spider god. That's terrifying, I take that back. Number nine, red belly piranha. 
I don't have to explain to you why a piranha is a bad idea to get near. I mean, we've all seen Piranha 3 Double D, right? That's a timeless classic. Well, the red-bellied piranha is one of the most dangerous piranhas in the piranha game. Its behavior is way more aggressive than that of an average piranha. It's almost like an acre of the rainforest disappearing every second is making it more aggressive. Yeah, I'd be aggressive too in those waters, no doubt about it. Number eight, the electric eel. I say, ooh, girl, don't touch this. First of all, never rub an electric eel like that. Never rub one like they're a genie lamp. You'll want more than three wishes at that point. That's horrible. That was the Moray eel. That one, bite your fingers off easily, but you should never touch an eel in the first place because a lot of them are electric. As its name suggests, these type of eels can mess you up even if you were to get the first hit. Specifically, the newly discovered two and a half meter Electrophorus volti, appropriately named after Alessandro Volta, AKA the guy who invented the battery. It can release a shock up to 860 60 volts, more than seven times the voltage of a wall plug. Number seven, the green anaconda. Of course we have to mention the anaconda. It's so scary, the biggest snake ever. That's horrible. This movie came out 25 years ago. I remember watching it with my family. It made me extremely afraid of snakes and water. Although the green anaconda is a non-venomous snake, the boa constrictor is still one of the most feared. Obviously, look at its size. Green anacondas live in calm marshes or slow streams. They wait until their large prey gets thirsty, and once they come to the water, the anaconda suffocates its lunch. It wraps itself around it like 17 times. It's the scariest thing I've ever seen. And then it just slowly, ugh, just slowly eats it. It's so scary. It's so dinosaur, really. Anacondas hunt prey that's larger than us humans, so if they wanted to, they could for sure just swallow us whole. There's only no evidence of it happening because humans rarely interact with them. So yeah, let's keep that ratio at the zero point. That would be great. Don't be the first guy to get eaten by an anaconda, please. Number six, the boiling river. Ooh, this one's hot. It's real hot. It's pretty common knowledge that the Amazon is home to the longest river in the world, but there is another river found in the Amazon rainforest that is equally as astonishing but for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, it's not good. As its name suggests, water temperatures in the boiling river reach up to 93 degrees Celsius. The steam coming off the surface of the water sure is inviting, but animals and humans know better by now. Yeah, no skinny dipping in this river, or any river for that matter. I don't know, there's still water snakes. There's still debate around the source of the heat for this river, but as of right now, it's believed to be entirely natural and geothermal. Now, despite the river not being near any active volcanoes or geothermal vents, it is quite an anomaly. It's odd. Just a hot, inviting river for no reason. There are local legends, of course, that say the river is a place of power and that the mother of the waters is responsible for the creation of this incredible and strange, mystifying river. Yeah, I like the sounds of that way more than geothermal activity. That's cool. Oh, the mother of the waters? Yeah, she heated this one up. Come on in. Geothermal? I'm like, eh, it's hot. You might burn your toes. Number five, black caiman. If you aren't a fan of alligators, just go ahead and skip to number four, I guess, because this one's terrifying, honestly. These super alligators live in calm, slow moving rivers, of course, like the big bad anacondas, places you wouldn't expect a dinosaur to jump out at you. Essentially, that's where you're gonna find one. Just like dangerous river snakes, these black caiman will take it slow. They'll wait for their prey to have a little sip of water, and then, and only then, the largest predator in the Amazon will then race out and grab its lunch, and then quickly return to the water. It's so scary. I've seen this on Reddit. It is, they're fast. They are quite fast. Birds, reptiles, mammals, you name it. This thing can eat it all and it will eat it all with this big <sighs> chomping mouth. Between 2008 and October 2013 alone, there were 43 black caiman attacks on people. Yeah, human beings. So stay away from the Amazon, stay away from the water. Don't do anything. Don't even go to zoos anymore. Just stop, don't even exist. Number four, Silkhenge. We don't even know what spider this is. So yeah, mystery spider leaving mystery art. Here we go. He's the Banksy of spiders. Let's talk about him. There's some sort of spider that's making what is referred to as a Silkhenge. Now it's tiny, it's on a little leaf. You will miss this. That's why it's so rare to find. This piece of spider art was first discovered in 2013 by Troy Alexander. Side note, what an amazing name, like Troy Alexander, you're a Greek goddess, my friend. Troy Alexander posted a photo of it on the internet asking for help in identifying it. I mean, because obviously it's so alien, but nobody can help identify because it's a totally unknown phenomena. And these structures help with reproduction because they're actually protecting eggs. That's the whole purpose. There's one main spire that is constructed of spider silk, and then that's where all the eggs are contained. Then there's also a wall or a fence that's made of spider silk to protect all the eggs in the middle. Therefore, it looks like Stonehenge. That's where it gets its name from, obviously. Stonehenge. Silkhenge, they look the same, both fascinating. One's really gross and made of webs, the other's made of rocks and lovely. Hopefully one day we can find out the real creator of these sculptures so we can give them the proper credit they deserve. But number three, 
Mosquitoes. These guys suck no matter where you are, but when it comes to the Amazon, oh, it's much worse than you could ever imagine, of course, as if anything else is not calming in there. Mosquitoes are one of the most dangerous because they can fly. You don't see them coming, and once they get you, too late, the damage has already been done. They have your blood, and now they're gonna go sell it on the black web. If you travel to parts of the Amazon rainforest and you don't have yellow fever vaccinations or extremely strong mosquito repellent, then you are going to have an extremely bad time. Yeah, these guys are just clouds of malaria waiting for you to walk right into. And that's so disgusting, I can't even do it. Even cottages, I can't do it. I'm not a fan of mosquitoes. Number two, bullet ants. Ugh, Ant-Man would not fight this ant, no way. They're called bullet ants because their bite feels like a bullet wound. So that is a promising start, my friends. It's also referred to as a Parapanera clavata. The bullet ant is commonly found in tropical rainforests in Central and South America. Their sting is considered the most powerful in the world, hence the, you know, bullet alias. And its effects can last 24 hours. That's a long time to be in a horrible amount of pain. These guys get you in a colony though? Game over, there's a good chance that you won't survive that. One was bad enough, let alone a colony? Ugh, that's terrible. Its venom is so powerful that currently, these ants are being studied for its use as a pesticide. So we're sacrificing ants in order to further their research on how to sacrifice ants. Number one, Brazilian wandering spider. Alrighty, this spider can actually help you guys out. Let's do it. Its bite can give you an erection that lasts for hours. That's a real fact. This animal is also obviously dangerous. Its bite will also hurt, besides, you know, that amazing side effect. You'll be sweating, blood pressure will increase, hence, you know, that side effect. And they're more commonly known as banana spiders. It can be found, of course, in Brazil and there's eight different kinds of wandering spiders. So my advice, avoid them all. The science is quite interesting here though. They're trying to create the next Viagra by using the spider's venom. Those are the top 10 terrifying Amazon forest discoveries that will make you never travel to the Amazon again. In our number 10 spot, we have the roar. This is a story about a girl named Alice who had been a fire watcher for a few years and never had any problems. She would go to work for eight hours and then leave. She would, of course, see rustling in the trees and, and assume it was an animal of some sort, but that's it, no issues. Until one unfortunate night when she was just settling into her shift, when she realized that she had forgotten her iPod in the car. She knew that it was highly discouraged to leave the tower, especially after sundown, but man, music is her everything, and she felt that the potential mental torture from not having it would be worth the risk. So as quick as she could, she left her base, ran to her car, and grabbed her iPod. She said that it couldn't have been more than 10 minutes in total. When she returned, she noticed that the door was open. Ah, crap. She immediately looked for cover to hide. About a minute after finding cover, she heard a deafening roar that she swears sounded otherworldly. And then she heard something that sounded like big footsteps leaving. After some time had passed and she felt sure that the creature had left, she slowly made her way to the tower. But when she opened the door, much to her surprise, it appeared untouched, almost as if no one even went inside. To this day, she's still confused about that night. Maybe she was just tired and hallucinated the whole thing, but she swears she was not on any illicit substance and that roar was monster-like. In our number nine spot, we have The Men in Black. This is a story by a man named Gabe, who had been working a shift at the watchtower when he noticed two black SUVs drive into the trail in the distance and eventually disappeared among the trees. Seeing this, of course, put him on high alert as it was pretty early in the morning and the sun was just rising. He found himself really paying attention to see if he could spot any further movement by them. Some time passed when suddenly he hears a loud gunfire. He immediately feels a wave of anxiety as it dawns on him that either an animal was shot or a human. But something told him that two black SUVs rolling up in the woods so early in the morning meant that it was probably more likely a human assassination than an animal. He sat there, letting his imagination run wild, when two large men knocked on the door of the tower. They were definitely special agents or security guards. He let them in, thinking that if they were violent, they would just come in anyway. They started questioning him, clearly trying to find out if he saw anything. He quickly replied, no, and did everything in his power to convince them. Seemingly satisfied that he was telling the truth, they just left. That was probably the most intense moment in his five years on the job. He never experienced anything quite like that again. Damn. 
that sounded like he witnessed a top secret assassination. Holy bejesus. In our number eight spot, we have the flying man. In North Carolina, circa 2003, an old man by the name of John was on duty at his watchtower. It was about 4 a.m. and as usual, as he put it, he was in his chair guarding the land. He liked to think of himself as some kind of important guard of a magical land such as Middle Earth. Yes, he grew up obsessed with the Lord of the Rings trilogy. He had a small TV in the tower with him and he would often watch reruns of old shows like Bewitched. I Dream of Genie and Gilligan's Island, to name a few. So that's what he was doing on this particular night. He was feeling rather sleepy and was on the brink of dozing off when suddenly he saw something jump into the sky in the corner of his eye. Startled, he got out of his chair and tried to see what it was. Normally he would have grabbed his binoculars, but it was still too dark and the sun wasn't going to rise for another two hours. Just then, he saw it again. Whatever it was jumped high into the sky and then back down into the trees. What was that, he thought. It looked too big to be a bird, but he couldn't quite make out what it was. He waited for a second and then he saw it again. But this time he saw what it was as it jumped directly under the moonlight. He knows how crazy it sounds, but without a doubt, he said he saw a human face and what looked like a human jumping. He immediately felt terrified, ducked down and hid in the tower cot and stayed there for a good hour. Nothing happened afterwards. The sun came up and eventually he left the tower to go home, but he has never forgotten that night and he has never seen anything like that ever again. In our number seven spot, we have The Liar. This is the story of a female fire watcher who was on her way to start her shift when she noticed a man with long straight black hair wearing a long leather black cloak and spiky boots. She wouldn't have thought that this was that out of the ordinary as she's come across a few punk rockers in her time. But on this particular day, it was literally 104 degrees Fahrenheit and it was almost impossible to breathe. So the fact that there was a person alive wearing a long leather coat on this day was insanity. She noticed him out of the corner of her eye standing beside his car, just staring at her as she left her car. She smiled trying to be polite and then started picking up her pace and walked towards her tower. He began to follow her and he must have ran to catch up with her because as quick as a blink, he was right behind her saying, hello. She jumped from the surprise and said, hi, back. He asked her where she was going. She told him that she was going to work and that she was kinda in a rush. He said, no problem. Why don't you just give me your number and we can talk later. At this point, she was scared about saying no as he clearly had already shown signs of insanity, but she also didn't want to give this potential psycho her actual number. So she just said, I'm sorry, but I have a boyfriend. He didn't respond right away. And so she picked up her pace and she waved to him, thinking that the conversation had died and that he would just walk away. But then he screamed, liar. She jumped and turned around to see him just glaring at her. She decided to make a run for it. When she got to the tower, she quickly locked the door and thankfully he never followed her. She decided to take some self-defense classes after this incident, just in case anything like this ever happened again. Probably a good idea. In our number six spot, we have the witches. According to this fire watcher, witch rituals aren't particularly uncommon to see in the forest. At least around their Sabbaths, you will see covens of witches gathering around and chanting around a fire in the middle of the forest, sometimes naked. Yes, she could see them with her binoculars. She assures you that she wasn't being a creep, but she just wanted to make sure that they were safe and watching for fires is literally her job. Regardless of how truly risky it is to start a bonfire in the forest, in this area in particular where this fire watcher works, she would be highly against any after hour meetup as she has seen many a deadly animal in the woods in her time. But it doesn't matter how many signs you put up, people never listen. She always has to report the covens for the mini bonfires and it always makes her feel frustrated because she wants people to be able to practice their religions, but why do they have to risk an entire forest fire? In any case, she gets shook every time she sees them and their naked ways. <laughs> Fascinating. I'm the type of person to wear fleece in bed in the summer, so the idea of dancing around naked outside at any point sounds torturous to me. In our number five spot, we have The Flash. 
This particular fire watcher hasn't had a lot of weird experiences in the year that he has been on duty, but there have been a few questionable occurrences. The watcher said that every so often you'll be looking out and you'll see a light flash randomly in the forest. Not like a firefly type of glittery flash, but a bright flash. He's asked his co-workers and they've also noticed this strange occurrence every so often. He has also seen a lot of extremely fast objects in the sky. You could argue that they are planes, but they're seemingly way faster than planes. Perhaps it could be a plane that the government has invented that is extremely fast and we just don't know about it yet. Or it could be aliens, one of the two. But he'll never forget the first time he saw the abnormally fast plane or alien ship, as he had never seen anything like that before. And for a second, he did feel a bit scared that perhaps some kind of foreign entity was about to land on Earth. But it was late at night and he was pretty tired. In our number four spot, we have the dog man. This is the story of a man that was on duty at a watchtower in Michigan. It was the year 2007. It was just a regular day. Nothing out of the ordinary happened from what he can remember. He had a 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. shift, and so he was getting ready for another long night. The night had gotten pretty dark fairly quickly, and so he was looking out into basically an almost pitch black wonderland with a million stars in the sky and the moon being the main source of light over the forest. Some time had passed when all of a sudden, he heard the weirdest howl that he had ever heard before. It was either a wolf that was sick or an animal that he had never come across before because it was a weird screeching howl. He looked around to see if he could spot its owner when he saw some movement down below. He continued watching the spot when suddenly he saw the craziest thing. It was a dog, but with the body of a human. It took everything in him not to scream and run for his life, but he thought he was most likely safer in the fire tower and he was right. That weird creature never revealed himself ever again, but whoa, was that scary. In our number three spot we have the stair. One night, this fire watcher was working an overnight shift. She was very aware of campers being in the woods that night because it was summer and people tended to camp in her forest quite a lot. So it wasn't alarming for her to see a man walking through the area below her tower as she assumed that it was just one of her campers. But when she got a closer look at the man, she noticed that he was holding a knife in his hand in a very horror movie-like way. And the next thing she knew, the man was looking up at her and they were having a full-on staring contest for what she said felt like an eternity. The man, still holding the knife, smiles at her then continues on his way. She immediately checked the locks on the tower to make sure that they were locked, but she never saw him after that probably one of the creepiest, most alarming 20 seconds of her life. In our number two spot, we have the spaceship. This particular fire watcher by the name of Kyle began telling his story by prefacing that being a fire watcher and a forest service worker, you see a lot more strange things that you can't rationalize or explain than you do fires. He would not recommend this job to anyone that fears the unknown. One memory that he will never forget is of a light in the sky that was just lingering. He became particularly interested in it because it didn't look quite like a star. It was this skinny vertical object that was bright and just hanging out in the sky. At some point, it looked like something on it flashed, kind of like the lights on a plane, except this was on the bottom of its vertical tail and it wasn't red. He continued to look at it when suddenly, at an incredible lightning speed, it disappeared into the sky. Oh, so basically this guy saw a spaceship, wild. But honestly, if you're sitting around and just staring at the wilderness and the sky for eight hours, you're bound to witness a spaceship at some point, I think. Coming up in our number one spot, we have the Mud Man. This story is told by a fire watcher named Alex who never thought that he would want to be a fire watcher, but he saw an opening for a position that paid 10 grand a month, and so he obviously wasn't going to turn it down. 10 grand a month, holy moly. I wonder if this position is straight out of our tax dollars because seriously, 10 grand is a ridiculous amount for this person, and if I'm paying for this, well, I'ma be writing a stern letter. <laughs> Let's be real, I def wouldn't, but whatever, ridiculous. 
Anyways, so this guy Alex began his first shift at the watchtower and as he enters the tower he finds a letter from his co-worker on things he should know about the job. The co-worker listed a bunch of things that he should be aware of such as don't go out in the middle of the night, if you hear anything in the middle of the night stop what you're doing and hide and oh yeah here's a gun just in case. Okay, starting to see why this job may pay so high. In any case, Alex starts his first shift, everything is going well until around 3 a.m. in the morning when he begins to hear the sound of metal creaking. He felt a sharp pain in his stomach and out of fear, he ran to the cot in the corner to hide. Just then, the door opened and he saw something that didn't look human, like a humanoid. With every step, a squish sound came with it. It walked to his cot and then eventually turned around and left. Later on, while talking to his coworker, he was informed that he had his first encounter with what they have called the Mud Man. Apparently one of the many monsters in this forest. Okay, yep, well, that's terrifying. I kinda wish they had installed a camera because we the people need to see evidence of this, like now. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have this scary water discovery. Researchers at Michigan State University have been working to try and provide us with a worldwide view on how climate change will affect our water availability. We obviously need water to survive, and we are quickly running out of it, and climate change certainly isn't helping. In an article posted to the National Science Foundation on February 2nd, these researchers announced their discovery that if we continue on the same trajectory we are on, by the end of the 21st century, the global land area and population facing extreme drought could more than double. This is an extremely dire discovery, and researchers have said that if things don't change, areas of the southern hemisphere where water scarcity is already a problem will be disproportionately affected, and that it could affect food security security and escalate human migration and conflict. This study definitely shed a light on a problem that we don't always think about. In our number 9 spot today we have this AirPod mishap. Bradford Gautier woke up in the morning feeling fine except for one bizarre thing. When he tried to drink a glass of water, he found that he was unable to actually swallow the water down. He realized he felt a bit of pressure in his chest and thought, oh, maybe my throat is just dry since he had been shoveling snow the night before. Bradford had fallen asleep with his AirPods in, so he went to look for them lost in the bed so that he could get them back into their case to charge. After searching for quite a while, he realized he could only find one, and that's when other members of his household began suggesting what might have happened to the other one. After an emergency room visit and an x-ray, doctors discovered exactly what Bradford's family assumed had happened. In his sleep, Bradford had accidentally swallowed one of the AirPods and it was lodged in the lower part of his esophagus. Luckily, he was able to quickly get it removed and apparently it actually still works despite the volume being a bit lower. In our number 8 spot today, we have this horrible Vancouver Island discovery. One Vancouver Island resident made a pretty terrible discovery recently as she was walking along a beach in Nanaimo. As she was walking, she unfortunately came across a sea lion that didn't have its head. Of course, this is never a good discovery, but matters were made worse when she ended up finding five sea lions in total with the same devastating injury. A marine mammal expert for the area explained that the injuries are definitely deliberate, which means that there is someone or some people who are going around doing this to the sea lions, which is absolutely horrible. The expert also explained that some of these sea lions were stellar sea lions, which are an at-risk species, which certainly makes the crime even worse than it already was. There will be an investigation into these discoveries and hopefully they'll be able to figure out what exactly is going on there. In our number seven spot today, we have this creepy garbage bag discovery. A New Zealand resident was walking along one day when they came across two full garbage bags. This can be a sign of something pretty gruesome, so they decided to call the police. Once the bags were open, it was confirmed that luckily they weren't filled with human remains, as was the worst case scenario, but they did contain something pretty unsettling. These garbage bags were full of mannequin heads. I'm sure this probably terrified the person who opened the bags when they first took a look. I'm glad it wasn't anything harmful, but there definitely is something weird about this discovery that feels very ominous. At the end of the day, I am just glad that no one got hurt. 
In our number six spot today, we have this Nebraska semi-truck discovery. Nebraska police pulled over a semi-truck on January 22nd after it had been clocked going 85 miles per hour in a 65 miles per hour zone, and it was also said that the driver wasn't quite in his lane. Upon further inspection, police discovered that not only did the driver appear to be under the influence, his truck was also carrying a few illicit substances. Authorities revealed that the truck had several hidden concealment points which is consistent with the substance transport. Of course, the driver ended up being taken into custody where he is awaiting bail, and the truck was towed from the scene for further investigation. In our number five spot today, we have this pre-approved vaccine controversy. Since the start of the pandemic, companies have been in a race to create a vaccine that can help return our world to normal. Of course, now in 2021, there are a few options for vaccines that are being distributed, while other companies are in the trial testing phases to ensure that the vaccines are safe for humans. These testing trials are absolutely critical as there is a level of trust with these kinds of things that is imperative to their success. Well, a biotechnology company recently came under fire after their COVID vaccine called Covaxin received regulatory approval from the Drugs Controller General of India, despite it not having gone through stage 3 trials completely. It was only approved for emergency use, so it's not likely it was about to be widely distributed, but it certainly feels safer to wait until it is gone and fully completed all testing trials. In our number four spot today, we have this real estate agent creepy discovery. A West Virginia real estate agent was looking around a house she was selling when she came across something that literally made her scream. She unsuspectingly opened the basement door and found a statue of a boy, which certainly would make anyone jump at first. If you thought you were alone and opened a door to this, for a split second, I am sure it would spook you right out as you might think it was a real person. Aside from that, the statue looks very creepy, like it honestly could be cursed. This statue with the backdrop of an unfinished basement definitely creeps me out just looking at the photo of it. The realtor explained that although she is used to seeing weird and funny things in houses, this is the first time one has scared her so much she screamed. In our number three spot today we have this Australian mom's discovery. As summer holidays were coming to a close and school was about to begin in Australia, one mom decided it was time to get her kids ready for the school year. She grabbed their backpacks in order to fill them up with new school supplies. That is when she grabbed one of her daughter's backpacks only to open it up and find her lunch bag that still had food in it from when summer holidays began last year. Of course, this is an honest mistake and pretty much completely harmless, aside from the mom having the horrific task of figuring out what to do with the rotten food and undoubtedly smelly Tupperware container. This mom definitely deserves some extra love after that. In our number two spot today, we have this mechanic discovery. A mechanic's TikTok has gone viral after a completely shocking discovery was made. His username is chaos underscore no but I believe that the account is now private. Apparently a customer had brought in her car to get it inspected after she believed her ex-boyfriend had placed a tracking device on it. The mechanic was unfortunately able to prove her fears correct when he found exactly what she suspected was there. Unfortunately, there hasn't been any update on what exactly happened after they found the device, and I'm not exactly sure what can be done in this situation, but I am very glad they found it and really glad that the mechanic took the woman seriously and really searched for it. In the comments of the video, there were a lot of people sharing similar experiences, and I honestly had no idea that this was such a common occurrence. In the number one spot today, we have Karis Lavert. Karis Lavert is an NBA player with the Indiana Pacers. He was first drafted in 2016 by the Pacers, but was then traded to the Brooklyn Nets, where he played until he was traded back to the Pacers this year. When you're traded to a new team, there is a mandatory health screening that you have to go through. Karis was doing this screening and received an MRI when doctors discovered a mass on his left kidney. On January 25th, he underwent a successful surgery to remove this mass, and it was confirmed that it was a type of kidney cancer called renal cell carcinoma. It is said that Karis luckily doesn't need any further treatment, and he should be making a full recovery, which is amazing news. He explained how the trade potentially saved his life because he was feeling 100% healthy and had no symptoms telling him that anything was wrong. The mandatory screening for this trade let him know what was going on in his body, and I am so glad that they caught it in time. Number 10, Amazon Tools. The Amazon rainforest is home to 
many unique and dangerous creatures, as well as unsolved mysteries and lost civilizations. But did you know that the Amazon was actually once home to giants? At least this evidence discovered in 2012 seems to point to that being the truth. A group of Ecuadorian researchers ventured into the thick forest in order to follow ancient legends of a city of giants, and they actually found it. They found massive stone structures and even a large pyramid. The stones being so precisely cut and arranged that it could not have been just formed by the forces of nature. Within these structures, they also found massive stone tools that were too large for any normal sized human to use, including hammers and chisels and other building tools. While some people do still chalk it up to natural formations, the team and many others stand by their belief that this city was once home to a race of giants. Number 9. Giant Skeleton In 1890 in France, a man named Georges Vachet made a skeletal discovery in a Bronze Age cemetery in Castelnau. Three separate bone fragments were found that came from both the arm and the leg, or humerus and tibia bones for all the scientists out there. The bones seem to date back to the Neolithic era, which was around 10,000 to 4,000 BC, and they are thought to be evidence of one of the largest human beings ever. The man who discovered them used the size of the bone fragments to estimate the total size of the person, which would have been around 11 and a half feet tall. In 1892, the bones were sent to a university in France to be carefully studied by a professor of pathological anatomy, him admitting that the bones represented a quote, very tall race. A few years later, giant skulls were found in another French cemetery and also sent away for even more study. Number 8. Bigfoot The first discovery of Sasquatch or Bigfoot footprints goes all the way back to the year 1811. Since then, there have been countless reports of Bigfoot sightings and encounters, and with the invention of photo and video cameras came massive amounts of apparent real footage of Bigfoot. Bigfoot is most often described as being a giant humanoid creature around 15 feet tall who tends to hang out in the woods and ignore fabricated mating calls from Bigfoot hunters on their television shows. These sightings also span all the way across the entire world, each country and culture having their own representation and name for the mysterious creature. From the Russian Yeti to the Australian Yowie, they're apparently everywhere. So while many photos and recordings of Bigfoot have been debunked, there are many people who truly believe the Bigfoot is real, and who's to say they couldn't potentially be a long lost race of giants who had to move into the woods as society evolved. Number seven. West Virginia Giants The giant skeletons discovered in France aren't the only reports of giant remains being found. They have also been found in American soil, specifically in West Virginia. In 1774, a man named Jack Parsons was walking along a flooded river when he saw a bone sticking out of the ground. And like any normal person would do, he pulled it out, discovering it was a femur, but it was almost twice the size of his own. Alongside it, he found more bones and discovered a skeleton that was around 8 feet tall. In 1838, excavators found even more remains that were also much taller than the average person. In the 1850s, even more were found, though they soon went missing and were thought to have been stolen and sold. Over the years, even more remains were found in the late 1800s, one skeleton even being over 10 feet tall. The giant town and other places across West Virginia have even more stories of discoveries of this race of giants. Number 6. Robert Wadlow Arguably the most famous real giant who you've probably heard of before is a man who was named Robert Wadlow. If you have read the Guinness Book of World Records or visited one of their walkthrough museums, you have probably seen his picture or stood next to his giant life-size statue. And yes, this guy was actually real and he was actually that tall. He was just brushing 9 feet tall at the time of his death in the summer of 19. He was born in 1918, and at the time, no one knew just how tall he was going to be, as he was an average size baby weighing 8.7 pounds, which is less than I weighed when I was born, but to be fair, I was a big baby. He then quickly started to shoot up, and by the time he was 8 years old, he was almost 6 feet tall. For reference, the average 8 year old is usually around 4 feet tall. He became a celebrity for his height, starring in the circus and doing a promotional tour for a shoe company. Unfortunately, his gigantic
gigantism led to numerous medical issues and he died at the age of only 22. Number 5. Greek Mythology Now let's turn around and take a look back at some more theoretical proof of giants, some famous giants from different cultures and legends. I know you may not think of this as real evidence, but I just love digging into these myths and depictions, and if so many different cultures across the world are writing about giants, this could be evidence that they're real, right? So let's start with the Greeks. Atlas was the name of a titan that went to war against Olympus. As we know, the titans lost, and Atlas was cursed to hold up the sky for the rest of eternity. Atlas also had a run-in with Perseus, who was a slayer of monsters. Atlas tried to scare Perseus away, and in response, Perseus took Medusa's head out of his bag and turned Atlas to stone, creating the range that is now known as the Atlas Mountains. But hey, at least he doesn't have to hold up the sky anymore. Number 4. Irish Giants Irish mythology believes that a race of giants known as the Fomorians were actually the original settlers of Ireland. Balor was the king of these one-eyed giants and was also the god of death. It was said that anyone who looked at him would die instantly. Because of this, he constantly kept his eye closed until it was absolutely necessary. A prophecy said that he would be killed by his own grandson, so he locked his daughter away to prevent her from having any children. But this didn't work as a minor God snuck in and got comfortable with his daughter and they loved each other very much and she had three kids. But Balor was still thinking with his head and so he threw all three kids into the ocean. Problem solved, right? Wrong. One of the sons survived and was raised by the god of the sea. The kid grew up, led a bunch of Irish gods into battle, and he killed Balor by ripping out his eye. Goodbye, King of Giants, you really tried your best. Number 3. The Bible When you think of giants in the Bible, you may think of the story of Goliath, a giant who was defeated by a regular-sized shepherd named David. Goliath was a champion from the city of Gath, which is a place where a race of giants apparently originated from. His exact size is up in the air, but many people believe he was around 9 foot 7 and wore a large amount of bronze armor. And here's how the story goes. David goes out to face Goliath, holding the fate of his people in his hands. So of course, he's armed with a very menacing weapon, a slingshot. David uses his trusty slingshot to fire a rock, which hits Goliath right between his eyes. And Goliath falls down and dies immediately. Pretty good shot. David and Goliath has become an infamous story for representing the underdog, though my personal favorite story about underdogs is the movie Underdog, released in 2007. Number 2. Gog Magog If you know me, then you know I'm constantly looking for names to name my future children, and this one is definitely a strong contender. Gog Magog is the name of the last British giant. A Welshman wrote a book about how early Britain was inhabited by a race of giants. One of the being Gog Magog, 12 feet tall and able to easily uproot an oak tree. One day the giants attacked Brutus, descendant of the Trojans, and all the giants were killed except for good old Goggy. Brutus took Gog Magog to his second in command who was apparently super into giant wrestling. The two wrestled and Gog Magog was going pretty ham and crushed a few of the guy's ribs. But this didn't kill the guy and instead just made him super angry. Fueled by his rage, the man was able to pick up Gog Magog carry him up a hill, toss him off a cliff to his death, ridding the world of Britain's last giant. Rest in peace, Gog Magog. Number 1. Hrungnir Giants exist all over Norse mythology, but the one that is known as the biggest and baddest is called Rungnir. One day, Odin, the leader of the Norse gods of Asgard, challenged the giant to a horse race, which turns out to be a little unfair when you take into account the fact that Odin was riding his magical six-legged horse and Rungnir just had a normal horse. He of course lost, and Odin at least felt a little bad about it, so he invited the giant back to Asgard for a drink. Like me, he couldn't handle his alcohol and started getting a little rowdy, saying that he would kill all of the gods of Asgard except for two goddesses which he would bring back with him to the realm of the giants. The Asgardians were like, hey bro, that's kinda not cool, and told Thor to come deal with this clown. So the two met for battle, Rungnir wearing stone armor and with a massive stone as his weapon. Thor picked up his magical hammer Mjolnir and it broke through both the stone and Rungnir's face killing him. I'm noticing a pattern in these stories that the giant always ends up dying and probably why they're not around today. Kicking off the list at number 10, let's dive in. Ooh Barracuda. 
Exploring the deep is dangerous if you're a diver, of course, not because of the deadly ocean life surrounding your every direction, but because if you come up too quickly, major health problems will follow. But if not that, probably a deadly barracuda, equally as scary. This deep discovery was made by user Arira95. I'm pulling real events for this one from real deep sea divers. We're going to the real content for this one, so buckle up. One time when my parents visited Mexico, they went diving and my mom was slightly lower than my dad looking at the ocean floor. My mom had on a gold necklace that was floating in the water around her and it was a sunny day and a fairly shallow dive at this point, so it was sparkling. My mom looked below at all the critters when my dad grabbed her and started frantically shaking her arm to get her attention. I'm sweating reading this. She looked up and a barracuda was directly in front of her staring intently at that shiny necklace. She slowly moved up her hand to cover the necklace and they slowly and calmly moved away from it and it took off without bothering them anymore. But still pretty unsettling and taught my mom to be a little more aware of her surroundings when she's diving. I mean, fair, but I mean, no one expects a barracuda. Also, if your mom wants to dive with chains on, that's pretty sick. You won't catch her slacking. Even in the depths of the sea, she's like, I'm ready. I don't care who shows up. I don't care who I bump into. Water shoes and bling, check and check. Let's go diving. Number nine, venomous sea snakes. Last year in the deep waters off Australia's coast, of course it's Australia, always Australia, a sea snake that was once thought to be extinct has been rediscovered. How fun. He's like, ah, psych, you thought. Just when you thought the ocean couldn't get even more dangerous, now we got new sea snakes to worry about. The short-nosed sea snake hasn't been seen in 23 years, and they would often live near Ashmore Reef. But last year, divers found one 67 meters below the surface in the twilight zone, which is pretty wild. Just lurking in the dark, just hanging out, meditating. The Australian Institute of Marine Science is responsible for this discovery, and the team calls this a second chance to protect and further understand the species. And an up-close personal encounter is brought to life from this diver. Apparently, this happens from time to time before major storms. Snakes can sense an oncoming storm, so what they try and do is latch onto something heading in the direction towards shore. So they don't have to burn energy and they can just grab onto like a barrel or something and then just, you know, make its way there. Pretty smart. So this diver was exploring, nothing was going crazy or anything like that, and then he felt a snake wrap onto his leg because he felt a storm was coming in. The diver didn't even know that the storm was coming. The snake did, and he wrapped its snake self around his leg. As soon as I was in the shallows, it uncurled and headed up the beach where it hid under a breadfruit tree. That was from a diver named Specialist Celery. Great name, also terrifying experience. I don't like snakes in water or on land. Next, number eight, surprise tiger shark. Yeah, not something you wanna see diving in the deep, a tiger shark. A glowing shark, left shark, I don't care. I want none of the shark smoke. This deep sea discovery comes from user Stormcutter, Sick name, a little bit better of a diver name. They say, I know a guy who was out diving for crayfish and lobster by the ocean. Also, the I know a guy trick, it was totally you. Don't lie to us. Crayfish often hide under the rocks, so as he was diving, a tiger shark emerged from a cave and rammed him, breaking his arm and ribs. <laughs> this guy got shucked by a shark, that's insane. He said the shark was testing him out. Yeah, I'd say. That's pretty sweet, man. I'm glad you survived, honestly. I bet you couldn't wait to tell people what happened. You're like, oh, my ribs? Yeah, I got sideswiped by a tiger shark. Yeah, he's feeling testy. You know how tiger sharks do. If you're wondering what that experience may have looked like, uh, this is footage of a rare tiger shark in New Zealand lurking in the deep. Number seven, humpback mama. This deep dive happened about a year ago. A diver named Sidetrack38, that's their username, not their legal name, although that would be pretty sweet. Sidetrack38, he's like, what's up? They were exploring the ocean one afternoon when all of a sudden they got charged by a mother humpback whale. The diver shared their experience online saying, her curious calf had swam around us and we were between her and the calf. Two of us never even saw her coming. We were watching the baby, but our third diver, saw her come. She kicked down and swam under us last minute. We didn't see anything until that 60 foot freight train passed just underneath us. Whales are beautiful. They're beautiful but terrifying creatures, my friend. Glad you didn't get a broken rib or back in this case because whales, they like to go pretty deep. Just a view. Trying to figure us Incredible. out. Incredible. Yeah, this is amazing. Justin, you want the reds <laughs> off? Look at that view. I hope we're getting screen captures of this. Number six, Mako shark. Mako sharks are one of the fastest sharks in the world. I'll start by saying that. Just get that fact in your head. Given this list so far, I would also start sweating if I were you. This is a scary one. This deep dive horror story comes from username One Dumb Diver. Great name. They clearly made this account just to share this occasion. So let's dive in. 
Nowadays, we dive with shark shields, which emit electronic pulses that freak the sharks out and keep them away. But back then, what we used was essentially a chainmail sleeve. The idea being that sharks hate the taste of metal, so if you give it your arm, it'll bite down, decide you're gross, and then move along. So I wait, it comes over, and I make a perfect move to give it my arm. However, just before the crunch, the crunch, it occurred to me that I had left my sleeve on my bed. Now I had a huge open gashing wound on my arm from the bite in open water, and I trailed blood everywhere. Not an ideal scenario. So once the shock finally wore off, you realize that you're in salt water, and salt and open wounds, they don't feel good. In a panic, I dropped my weight belt and shot up to the surface without any sort of waiting period. Not great. Because I hadn't been paying attention to the currents, I was approximately a quarter mile downstream of my boat, which meant that I had to swim back up to it. After getting bitten by a shark, imagine having to swim, that is a nightmare scenario. Glad you're okay. Also, you're not a dumb diver. You're just, you're experiencing the things. You're figuring it out. You're doing great. You're brave. I don't even like going in lakes. Number five, more sea snakes. Coming from Patrick667, about a year ago as well, they posted, so three days ago, I went snorkeling off Mimba Island in Zanzibar. Everything went normal and we started heading back. So I grabbed my net and I put my black fins, my black mask, snorkel and black wetsuit inside. Once back ashore, I grab my bag, jump off the boat, and head to the rental office to return said equipment. At that point, I feel my bag is moving somehow. At first look, it seemed like a flat black worm squirming quickly. After rotating the bag, I realized I was looking at only the tail of a one meter long black sea snake, one of the most venomous reptiles ever, trying to get out of the net like in the lobby. How it got there, I have no freaking clue. That is a nightmare scenario. Imagine being like, thanks so much. I had a great time. Here's a sand dollar. <laughs> also, don't mind the venomous snake. Number four, the frilled shark. Back in 2004, marine biologists discovered this dinosaur, the frilled shark, just hanging out, just lurking about 870 meters below the surface. So if you're anywhere around there, watch out. This one looks like an eel almost. It's so scary looking, it's so slippery and quick. Frilled sharks can grow up to seven feet long and they fight in the dark. They don't need to see to attack you, which is pretty terrifying considering all these deep dive stories are all in the pitch black. So unless you're a deep diver, you're not really gonna run into the frilled shark. Have you ever dealt with one of these? Are you a diver? Are you watching this because you're a diver? Please comment down below if you are. Comment some of your personal experiences. These were a nightmare to read. I couldn't even finish half of them. Everything is so dangerous and so fast underwater. Number three, snapping shrimp. This little guy can literally create a sonic boom as it attacks you, that's how fast it is. You won't see him coming, and neither did this diver. Here's a clip of a mantis shrimp punching through a diver's gear. Yeah, right through their water shoes. Bam! Ow! Ow! That really hurt. They're so quick, oh my god, they're tiny, but they, they really hit. They're often found in coral reefs, oyster reefs, these little guys, these pistol shrimp, they hit their prey at 100 kilometers per hour. And in doing so, a large air bubble is created, and because this, you know, Mike Tyson shrimp is so quick with the left hook, the following pop is around 200 decibels. The sound alone can stun its prey, and if they're lucky, it sometimes kills them. That's how you want to go out. You don't want to go out with one of these Superman punches to the neck. Number two, comb stars. Ocean life is by far the scariest thing out there. We have no idea what's in our oceans. We discover some crazy shit every year. Some deep sea fish with bioluminescence are for sure aliens, while others are just natural predators. That looks scary. Like the comb star, for example. This guy was not in Finding Nemo. He would have been a weird addition. A comb star is a starfish that contains tetrodoxin, which is this deadly neurotoxin that can cause paralysis. Yeah, Finding Nemo, that movie would be over in eight minutes if this guy was there. Per every gram of comb star flesh, there's enough toxin to take out 500 mice. So if you have a mice problem, Honestly, you can call one guy. It's a very specific weird call, but I know how you can do it. A little bit of textrodoxin. Tetrodoxin? Tecrodoxin. That's what it's called. And finally, coming in at number one, the electric eel. Awesome. That's the worst thing I've ever seen. Great. The moray eel, first of all, don't do what he just did. Don't go up to a random eel and start rubbing it like it's a genie lamp. That's not smart. It's not a great dame. You don't want to do that. That was the moray eel. That one can bite your fingers off in like two seconds. But you should never touch an eel in the first place because a lot of them are electric. Yeah, just like that MGMT song that's now stuck in our heads. 
As its name suggests, there's types of eels that can mess you up even if you were to get the first hit. Specifically, the newly discovered two and a half meter Electrophorus Volti. Appropriately named after Alessandro Volta, AKA the guy who invented the battery, this eel can release a shock up to 860 volts, which is more than seven times the voltage of a wall plug. A swimming wall plug that gets hungry. Nice, we love nature, I'm never swimming again. Number 10. 7,000 year old execution grave. In 2013 near Halberstadt, archaeologists were excavating a Neolithic settlement site when they came across a grisly discovery. The team, led by Christian Meyer, found a burial pit filled with nearly complete skeletons of nine people who lived approximately 7,000 years ago. Through testing of isotopes in their bones and teeth, which are different between people depending on diet and other factors, scientists deduced that these people were from a different location than the rest of the bodies that were buried in the area. The nine skeletons were also in positions that would indicate that they were thrown into the pit somewhat haphazardly, as opposed to being buried ceremoniously like some of the others near the same site were. The most disturbing part is how this grave differs from other graves around the country. In all of these other sites, the dead have all perished in different ways, as made clear with the forensic analysis of the bones, from spears to blunt force to natural causes. However, in the Halberstadt site, all of the dead have the same fatal wound on the back of the head, implying that these people were executed in the same precise way with a blow from a blunt weapon in the same spot. The archaeologists believe that this, combined with the fact that the dead found were mostly men, shows that these people were an attacking party who were clearly unsuccessful in their raid. Number 9. Sunken Ship uh, Before I tell you this next dark discovery, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so that we can keep bringing you amazing content. First found in 2020, this 400 year old wooden ship was found at the bottom of the river Trava, insanely well preserved. Researchers say that since wood rots so quickly underwater in this region, they were surprised at how much of the ship remained intact. The ship is believed to be a single masted cargo vessel between 20 and 25 meters long, and sunk standing almost completely upright. Around 150 wooden cargo barrels were found in the wreck that were filled with quicklime, an ingredient for mortar used in stonework made from burning limestone. Because of this specialized cargo, scientists believe that the ship was sailing from Scandinavia to regions of northern Germany that don't have any limestone. Marine researchers have been amazed at how well preserved the ship is, and they believe this is due to a layer of mud that happened to cover it when it finally rested on the bottom of the river. The mud kept the wood from rotting, but it also protected it from a type of saltwater clam known as the shipworm, which is very, very good at destroying submerged wood. Research and underwater excavations are still ongoing, and the team even believes that they may find remains of some of the long lost crew that was aboard when the ship met its final resting place. Number eight found in the foliage. In 1980, 69 year old Paul L. went for a walk in the forest near the town of Bruckburg. He did not tell anyone where he was going, but he left a farewell note for his family as he knew that this would be his last walk. His family searched for years, but he was never found. And in 2009, a teenage boy was walking through the same forest and noticed something strange, a bone lying on the ground. And after he brought it to the attention of the police, law enforcement did a thorough search of the area and discovered a skeleton 11 meters off the ground in a spruce tree. This chilling find is only amplified by the fact that both the body and a pistol were tied to the same tree. Police investigators believe that Paul L. climbed the tree, tied himself to it, and took his own life. And this is what made the body so difficult to find. I mean, who looks for a skeleton in a tree? Number seven, German Stonehenge. Most of us know about Stonehenge, a prehistoric monument in England consisting of circles made with massive stone slabs. No one's 100% sure who made it or what it was used for other than rituals, but it's not the only place of its kind in the world. In 1991, a plane was flying towards Berlin and someone noticed a strange structure below. When people went to investigate, they discovered this henge. It consists of concentric circles made out of massive wooden poles. The largest of the circles measures 115 meters or 380 feet, which actually makes it larger than England's Stonehenge. Archaeologists have since found multiple burial sites containing the remains of men and women of all ages who appear to have died in a sort of ritual sacrifice, some of which appear to be quite brutal. Weapons such as axes, along with drinking vessels and butchered animal bones were also found at the site. However, new excavations have found evidence of settlements as well, implying that not only was this place used for rituals and solstice celebrations, but also as a place for locals to live. Number six, stash secrets. In August of 2021, a history teacher was cleaning and making repairs to his aunt's house in Hagen after there had been severe flooding damage. When he removed a piece of rotted board, he found a small one foot wide hidden area, and inside he saw a newspaper dated in 1945. 
When he continued to look further, he discovered many German military artifacts from World War II, including a portrait of the mustached leader of Germany, brass knuckles, a revolver, military patches, and many, many letters and documents. It's believed that the house was once the local headquarters for the National Socialist People's Welfare Organization, or the NSV at the time, which was in charge of doling out the riches stolen from Jewish groups and individuals during the war. In other words, a safe house for bad guys. But the family says that they had no idea the history of the building when they purchased it in the 60s. Things were so haphazardly thrown and hidden in the wall that researchers believe that it must have been done in quite a hurry when the Allied troops closed in on the city. With no time to dispose of the important documents, they hid them in the walls, making for quite a discovery 76 years later. Number five, reused graves. In August of 2022, archaeologists were doing a preventative dig at the site of a newly planned rainwater retention basin in Tutlingen and came across a late Stone Age culture grave dating back to 3000 BC. While no human remains from that era have been found, the other items in the burial site imply that they were graves, mostly the pottery made from broken ceramic indicative of that time period, which would have been adorned with textures and pictures for the dead. However, there was another discovery made shortly after, in the same spot. More items were uncovered by archaeologists, including swords, jewelry, and drinking glasses, but this time they were from the Middle Ages, around 500 AD. That's right, a medieval gravesite on top of one from the Stone Ages, meaning that this same burial ground was used again 3,500 years after it was the first time. Excavation is still ongoing, so who knows what else they'll find. Number four, the Unicorn Cave Carving. Deep in the Hartz Mountains lies the Einhornhole, or the Unicorn Cave. It got its name from treasure hunters who thought that the remains they discovered there were those of the mythological animal, when most likely they were something else entirely, the bones of a prehistoric giant deer. In 2014, researchers discovered a 51,000-year-old art piece carved into the toe bone of a species of deer that existed during the Ice Age. Originally thought to be butchering marks, further experiments showed that the marks made were intentional and that the bone had most likely been boiled first to make it softer and easier to carve. This shows how early on humans were creating what could be called art, with the detailing being deliberate and complex, and it's a tragedy that so much of this has been lost to time. The story goes back even further, because what researchers found near the same area in 1990 will shock you. Number three, hominin weaponry. Before the bone carving was found, archeologists were already uncovering nearby sites. And in 1990, they discovered something truly remarkable. Perfectly preserved weapons, artifacts, and bones were uncovered that were approximately 300,000 years old. And that is absolutely insane to me. Ancient throwing sticks, push lances, and other tools were found, some of which scientists have yet to still divine the function of. Closer examination showed how the weapons had worn from use, and that told researchers what they were used for and how often. There were even marks in some of them that seemed to have been made from chipping bone. Now, who knows if that was from an animal or another early human? It's almost impossible to tell. But the fact that these exist at all is amazing to me. Number two, the Headless Horse, man. The legend of the Headless Horseman is well known around the world, and many cultures have their own version of the story of a headless rider on a dark horse come to do evil. But in Germany, they seem to have gotten it mixed around. In an ancient cemetery near Knittlingen, archaeologists revealed a perplexing discovery. In a 1,400-year-old grave, there was a man buried, and next to him was a horse that was missing its head. Further searching in the surrounding area showed that many of the graves had jewelry like pearl necklaces and bracelets, as well as everyday goods like food stored in ceramic pots buried alongside the bodies. This led researchers to believe that they were not sacrifices or offerings, but a gift to be used in the afterlife. And the gifts you were given depended on your status. And since this man was buried alongside most of a horse, it would imply that the man who rested there was of great esteem, and perhaps even owned that horse, and can now ride with them in the afterlife. Either way, headless skeletons of any kind are creepy. We all know of the dark and terrible things that occurred in Germany during World War II, but our number one dark discovery came right at the end of the war. When Allied troops entered the town of Dachau, they thought that they were ready for anything whether that was German officers ready to fight or booby traps laid by Axis forces, but nothing could compare them for what they saw when they entered the camp. But before they even entered the camp, soldiers were put off by a foul odor. They believed that they were upwind of some sort of chemical factory, but they soon discovered what was known as the death train. 
where bodies of thousands of innocent people were laid with no regard to their dignity. These people had their lives taken for absolutely no reason, and when they were discovered, soldiers forced members of the German army and other sympathizers to help give them a proper burial. With the arrival of the Allied troops in Dachau and the liberation of the camp and its survivors, the war was all but won, and the evil German leader took his own life the next day. The dark history of the camp can still be felt by visitors to this day and helps people learn of the worst of humanity and the best of humanity who fought to keep the evils at bay. Thank you.